How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now, you guys let me know there was a new lever net, a new wire connector on the market that you can get over at Harbor Freight under the Pittsburgh brand, or you'll actually see it labeled as Vanguard online. Now, that should be a direct competitor to my favorite Wago 221 lever net that I've been using for years and years and highly recommend DIY homeowners taking on electrical projects safely. But how do they actually compare? So let's look at some of the basic features and see if it's a one-to-one -one match here. But more importantly, we'll put them to the test where I have a wire nut, Wago lever nut, and then also these new lever nuts from Harbor Freight wired on the hot side and we'll run almost 30 amps through those and look at a FLIR thermal imaging camera to see the heat signature. Is there any one of these wire connectors that gives off more heat, which would be indicative of a higher resistance, which we do wanna stay away from for our wire connectors. So it should be pretty interesting. And let me know down in the comments, once you see the review, would you actually use these lever nuts on your own home? So let's jump into it. So if you order online or walk into your Harbor Freight, you'll see these packages for about 10 bucks. Now overall, that's about half of the price you'll pay on Amazon if you're ordering one of these assortment kits, which is what I usually link in my description. And the assortment kit often comes with two wire, three wire, and five wire. And that's exactly what comes in this Pittsburgh or this Harbor Freight kit. We have 10 two wire, 10 three wire, and five five wire. And that's a good assortment as compared to the frequency for which you'd be using three wire, two wire, and the five wire. Five wire you're gonna use on your grounds and neutrals when you're bringing quite a few together. Now, right away, one confusing thing for the Harbor Freight brand is they say here that they're listed to 10 gauge. So that'd be 24 gauge to 10 gauge, that's what they're rated. And then here's your other specs. The 221 Fahrenheit is comparable to your other components such as the Wago lever nuts and wire nuts. 600 volts is a little bit higher than what the Wago lever nuts is listed out at. Now this does not list out an amperage rating, which is kind of interesting. And one other thing that I saw, if we zoom in on the back here and try to actually see this text that's listed out on the back of these wire connectors. So if you can see that, that says it's UL listed, which is good, and then 600 volts, which co corresponds to what we saw in the front, but then you can see that gauge 24 and it says to 12. So that is interesting. I don't know why it would say on the lever nut 12 when the package says to 10. And if we look at size comparison, the most common is the 400 series from Wago. This is gonna be the one you're using in most of the circuits around your house for your 15 amp and 20 amp circuits. The Harbor Freight is actually quite a bit bigger in pretty much every dimension. Harbor Freight lever nut is much more comparable to the 600 series, which does go up to 10 gauge. So these are about the same size and comparable. The problem is I'm not sure why it says 12 gauge on the back for these if they're actually rated for 10 gauge. Now overall, the functionality is very similar. The wire loads to the side that the lever opens up. You could just press it in. I usually open up the levers, make sure I'm getting my wire all the way through by looking through the transparent housing and then closing that down to make sure I have a secure connection. Now, Wagos are a little bit better uh, in that you can see from that top side, but you can also very clearly see from the back side. These you cannot very clearly see because the bus bar actually covers that up. So you're not able to see that your copper is at full depth and properly seated on the bus bar. You have to look at the top side, which is a little bit harder to see where you can see your copper is all the way at the end. And then also another con is with test probes on your digital multimeters, Wagos have actual little ports where you can directly contact to the bus bar. So while in use, you can test your circuits and troubleshoot to see if you're getting your voltage here at your connectors which does come in handy for different troubleshooting scenarios. And then you can see we do not have that test port. And Wagos actually have it not only on the back here, but they also will have that underneath one of the levers where you can reach in and also touch the bus bar. So pretty handy feature that Wagos have ever had and did not come through on the Harbor Freight version. So overall, I'd give pricing as a benefit to the Harbor Freight lever nuts, 
But other than that, I would go with Wagga Lever Nuts on the features, the little test ports, and then also just the sizing on the most common ones we'll be using, which is on our 15 and 20 amp circuits. Now you'll see a link in the description if you want to see a comparable version of the Wago package with two wire, three wire, five wire, and those inline splices, which is a great place to start. Also a link in the description, we're doing a little bit of data collection on something most of us, the vast majority of us have to face, and that's homeowner's insurance, which has been going up year after year and starting to be a major part of our overall monthly payment. And some people are even getting just dropped from their insurers for no apparent reason. So we need a little feedback from you guys with a 10 question survey. You provide your feedback and then we're going to pull that all together. We'll do a video in the future, but I'll also just put a website out there where you can filter down to your state, how much deductible you want to carry, how much liability, any other factors, the key factors to your insurance policy. So then you can compare what are you paying compared to your peers? What are others paying? Are you at the high side? Are you at the low side, somewhere in the middle? So you know if you should go out and price some new insurance to try to save some money and get the coverage that you want to need. So for our testing, this is a little different setup than I've done in the past. I wanted to go side by side. So when I do the FLIR thermal imaging camera, we can see each of these wire connectors. So we have our standard wire nut, power is off. I'll show you the pre-twist, nothing too fancy just a very common DIY pre-twist. And then we have our Waga 221 in the middle. Now this is the 613 that goes up to 10 gauge. And then we have the Harbor Freight or the Pittsburgh brand or the Vanguard brand if you're buying it online. And then what we're really looking at is what is the overall temperature in this connector and how does that compare to our standard wire nut? In the past, the wire nut has been slightly cooler than the Wago 221 lever nut, but it's nowhere near that 220 degrees Fahrenheit overall top threshold value for a temperature. So although it has a slightly higher internal resistance, at least from my standpoint, that does not worry me. Now we have tested one Chinese knockoff brand in the past, which was substantially warmer and I could see it leading to issues in the future. So let's see how this guy holds up. All right, we'll go ahead and crank on our space heaters. This one to max. This one, I'm gonna go to 1300 watt setting and our third one. I'll crank this guy all the way up. Now I'll take those heating elements a second to turn on and then we'll get an idea of what we're actually running over here on the EcoFlow. So you can see, if we get that glare off there, 3,300 watts. So if we run 30 amps, we'd expect to be about 3,600, which we're creeping up to. All right, so it looks like we'll be around 3,700, and then it does start to stabilize here. So I'll keep an eye on it, but that is going to be at 30 amps or just above for this testing. All right, so we've been running for five minutes and the silhouette is a little offset from the heat signature, but we see about 116 at the Harbor Freight and then a maximum around 112 for the Wago and then the wire nuts coming in around 102. All right, so there's five separate intervals, five minutes for each interval. So I ran for 25 minutes at that 30 amps or actually a little bit above. I use this little FLIR thermal imaging camera that you can put in the end of an Android or iPhone, super handy to get the heat signatures. And that's where I got the test points. So the temperatures were the maximum temperature I saw for each of the wire connectors. So if we look at this at five, 10, 15, 20, and 25 minutes, you'll see the column for wire nuts in degrees Fahrenheit, Wago 221, Harbor Freight, and then a design max I put out there. You can see the line graphs there, the wire nut, for all of my different testing I've done, the wire nut is always the best. It has the least amount of resistance there, so the least amount of heat, or at least from the outside of the wire nut, it does not transfer that heat out. So maybe there's some escaping from the bottom, but it is always the lowest temperature from when I've tested versus lever nuts. The Wagga lever nut was slightly better than the Harbor Freight, but they all kind of reached a steady state or equilibrium point where the heat generated from the overall load that we were putting through it equaled the amount that it could reject to the environment because it was pretty much open to the air. So they all kind of reached that steady state, which is good to see that they didn't just continue to go up. And the Harbor Freight was only slightly higher at 125 or 126 degrees Fahrenheit, and the, and the Wago was around 124 degrees Fahrenheit as a max. So let's go ahead and look at that with respect 
to a design maximum. So if I adjust this to 240, my y-axis, then we bring in a, a straight line here, which represents a design maximum. So we have a large gap between the temperatures we're seeing and the temperatures that we know these components can handle. That is not always the case. If we look back at a former test we did here, this was with Chinese knockoff lever nuts you can get on Amazon. In one of those, you can see this line here in a similar design max. It actually got up to 184 degrees Fahrenheit and really started to close that gap to the design max. So it doesn't always happen this way, but in this case, Wago and Harbor Freight, I would say, performed really well. So after looking at the features and doing the testing, I was pretty surprised, honestly, with the performance of the Harbor Freight and that it really was neck and neck with the Wago lever nut. Now, I prefer Wago because of some of the features we talked about and the 400 series just being so much smaller it's much easier to get those in the junction box and work with them. And for clarification, the 400 series through UL testing is 20 amp certified and the 600 series is 30 amp certified. Remember the Pittsburgh or the Vanguard or the Harbor Freight, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. I don't know what that is actually certified for. It is UL listed. I don't know what the amperage is. And I am a bit concerned on that confusion on the box for 10 gauge solid core but then on the back, it says it's only certified for 12. Maybe that means stranded. I don't love that there's that mismatch there. So personally, as you probably expect, I am sticking with the Wago 221. If you want to see some of our other testing, check out this video right here. It's where we put Wagos versus the Insure lever nuts from Ideal. And then we ordered some of the Chinese knockoff lever nuts right here and we put them to the test. And that was where we did see a substantial gap in one of those lever nuts. And we also started breaking them apart, looking at some of the internals, if you're interested in that. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.